Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Abdullah Ismail from the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, today, inshallah, <clears throat> uh, we will start uh, chapter three. It may be the last chapter. I'm not sure, to be honest, because I don't know if we have time to go over everything. And I think this chapter is probably the meat of the course. Uh, so I'm not sure if we have time to go over uh, chapter four. If we finish chapter three early, maybe we can take a couple of topics from chapter four. Let's just leave that uh, to how things go. But 80%, uh, we will only do chapter three because it's, it's, it's a huge chapter and we need to work. Uh, we need to take a lot of things here. So today, inshallah, uh, I will introduce you to the concept of style. What is style? Uh, what is meaning, what is uh, the basic definition of translating style, so on uh, and so forth. Okay, uh, let me just make sure I'm recording. I am, okay. Uh, what is style? Uh, the book defines uh, style as the different choices made by writers, uh, writers or speakers, by the way, of a language. Uh, from the language stock, من المخزن, يعني من inventory, the lexicon, uh, the inventory of vocabulary, uh, grammatical constructions, uh, and so on and so forth. In regard to layout, you get a different choices made by speakers or writers of a language in regard to layout, the layout of their words or the shape. يعني شكل. Uh, how they stitch the words together and order them. Grammar, vocabulary, uh, or words, and phonology or sounds. Phonology is chapter four. Namely, from the major aspects, levels, and components of language. So style is basically the choices that a speaker or a writer uh, makes to express a particular idea. For example, remember how in Arabic, uh, we always uh, studied how fronting, يعني التقديم, you feed الحصر or الأهمية uh, والتخصيص, stuff like that. التقديم or fronting, التقديم والتأخير, is a style of writing and it serves a function, a purpose in the text. That, that purpose or function is, for example, al-hasr, or uh, to, to stress or to emphasize the importance of this particular uh, thing. Okay. Uh, so we have styles and we have functions of these styles. So we need to remember Always, when we read a text and we want to translate a text, we need to pay attention to its style, whether it's formal or informal, whether it's clear, whether it's ambiguous, uh, the, type, the choices of words it uses, does it use uh, simple language or complicated language? Uh, because most of the time, this is deliberate and done on purpose. Because style, again, it's the vessel that channels the meaning, and thus it is part of it. Imagine style as a boat that carries people uh, along a, a river or something. Uh, the form uh, that carries the content. Is it important? Should we consider style in translation? That is the question that we will be doing uh, today and probably until the end of uh, the semester, maybe. Style is part of the meaning, okay? That's just, uh, we will come to classical and conventional views on style and modern views on style now. But in general, when we speak about language components, uh, sometimes some people define translation as only the rendition of meaning, بس نقل المعنى. Uh, these people are mostly defenders of uh, uh, domestication 
and uh, stripping the text of all its foreignness. فبقول لك أنا مش معني إيش كيف حكى الجملة هذه أو الشغلة هذه لا أنا معني أنقل للقارئ فقط المعنى the bare minimum of meaning the bare meaning المعنى المجرد فقط. But in reality, if you ask uh, uh, this question, where does meaning, where does proposition, which is basically meaning, where where does it lie? Where can I find it? You can find meaning in all of these categories grammar vocabulary style and phonology all of these are basically meaning is in all of these it's not in one particular category it's not only in vocabulary and it's not only in style or in phonology it's in all of them together so meaning lies in grammar vocabulary style and components when we talk about grammar, by the way, grammar was chapter one, uh, which we skipped. Uh, but you can uh, do it on your own. It's really easy. Uh, vocabulary. We've done it. We have done this chapter. Synonymy, polysemy, anatomy, uh, connotations, collocations, idioms, proverbs. Uh, we did it. And then we will come to style. Look at the look at style here. We have formality versus informality. اللغة الفصيحة مقابل اللغة العامية أو شبه الفصيحة أو غير الفصيحة. طبعا we have more detailed, more uh, elaborate uh, classifications when we come to this particular category. We have the style of fronting, تقديم وتأخير, parallelism or par parallel structure, ambiguity. Parallel structure يعني uh, يعني consistency. في استخدام بعض التراكيب ambiguity الغموض repetition التكرار redundancy الحشو short long sentences irony punctuation nominalization and verb nominalization basically is the use of nouns or gerunds الاسميات يعني اما verbalization the use of for example الجملة الفعلية in Arabic. طيب في شغلة مهمة هنا. For example, يعني the importance of style, especially in literature, by the way, because literature reflects uh, humans and the human experience. Unlike when you talk about a technical text, for example, it does have, it has a style to an extent, but it's not a deal breaker. Okay. Uh, because it, it has the style of a formal language, an academic language, if it was maybe a research paper or something. Uh, the, the sentence length and the sentence structure is known. It's either simple, complex, or, or compound, or a compound complex. So, you, know, you, know, you know what you are doing when you talk about a scientific or a technical or a formal or a frozen formal text. But when you come to literature, you have a whole wide range of variety. Uh, for example, you have Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway, who writes short, punchy sentences. And he uses a lot of simple sentences. His sentences are short to the point. Uh, you, when you translate, for example, the old man and the sea, you need to pay attention to this. You can't just use a comma uh, where he uses a period because Hemingway uses the short sentences to serve a purpose, to give you the text, to deliver the text uh, in a short, punchy way, if you will. Uh, and when you talk about, uh, for example, William Faulkner, the famous American novelist, Faulkner uses the stream of consciousness. Also, uh, James Joyce uses that, uh, Virginia Woolf, فكل هذول الناس they use تيار الوعي بيسموه uh, which is basically long uh, connected and incoherent sometimes sentences and when you render when you uh, render or translate Faulkner or Virginia Woolf or somebody like that you need to pay attention to the use of long sentences sometimes the sentences go as long as one or two pages can you imagine you can find three pages and th these three pages are only one sentence? And you need to pay attention to this. It's not haphazard, it's not random. It's deliberate and done 
uh, on purpose. Also, ambiguity. Ambiguity is really important in, lit in literature. Uh, you know how, you know the use ambiguity basically, it kind of, it, it is kind of similar to dramatic irony in, in literature and drama, if you are familiar with that term, uh, where basically the audience knows more than the characters or the, uh, the characters on the, on the stage or uh, on screen. <clears throat> so this ambiguity needs to be rendered in written works. You, you, you can't spoil uh, or state clearly what was intended to be ambiguous. I'll give you a, a striking example, to be honest, uh, maybe when we come to it. That's why I have it uh, highlighted. I have a, a really good example on it. Uh, طيب. Also, when you come to phonology, phonology, this basically uh, is more, it's in literature in like prose, but it also, uh, it's also more exclusive to poetry translation, the rhyme, the rhythm, the alliteration. I hope you are familiar with these terms if you studied poetry with Dr. Rifat. Assonance, meter, Foot, meter al bahar, foot at the chiming, stress, pitch, tone, etc. These are all issues that you need to pay attention to in translation. Taban, we will focus only on style. Haniji, maybe we can discuss uh, each problem, the formality versus informality, in one or two lectures, hopefully one. And we can see where we can go from there. Like, we have different style and different meanings okay type right. different style different meanings let's look at these sentences her father died yesterday her father was killed yesterday her father licked or bit the dust yesterday her father kicked the bucket yesterday her father passed away her father was martyred in the battlefield uh, her father slept his last sleep uh, her father uh, was hanged. To some people, to some people, or basically, basically, in a way, and to an extent, on a particular level, these sentences mean the same thing, that the father is no longer here, is dead. خلاص راح. بغض النظر عن كيف مات. هل هو مات لحاله موت تربه؟ هل حدا قتله؟ هل مش عارف إيش؟ in, uh, to a lot of people, if uh, a lot of translators, uh, these sentences should be, and sometimes have to be, translated into one sole sentence. And we have how many sentences? We have like eight sentences here. Okay. And a lot of translators would tell you that I know they sound, they are different. Uh, uh, different in style, but I don't care about the style. I care about the main, the meaning, the bare meaning, the naked meaning. فقول لي خلاص مات والدها بالأمس. Which is outrageous to me, at least. Like, let's look at the view of these people, the classical view on style. In the conventional view on style, these sentences can all be rendered into because style is irrelevant to the meaning to those people. I don't care, these people will tell you, I don't care how you say something. I only care about what you say, which is to a lot of other people, the very opposite of literature, the very idea of literature. Because remember, literature has topics, has themes. But I don't really care about the theme. I don't care if you write a poem about love. A lot of people write poems about love. I don't care about what you say, love. I care about how you say it. I care about the style, the form, the language you express uh, yourself in. It's not about, to me, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say what you say. The classical view on style holds the opposite uh, position. The very opposite position. Uh, I don't care about how you say something. I only care about what you say. And that is a very 
I would say, econom economical view on translation. Yani, I don't do. I want. I don't want to do a lot of work. I just want to give you the meaning. I don't know uh, how these people would probably look at uh, poetry translation and uh, translation of certain authors. It's a difficult job if you want to only, you would basically kill uh, or destroy or sabotage the, the work. If you translate, for example, Faulkner and Hemingway the same way by only giving the meaning, then aren't those two dif very different authors similar in the Arabic translation? The Arabic reader would think they are the same author because there is no difference different uh, difference in style in the Arabic uh, translation. Type, what do you think of this? Do you agree that all of these sentences should be translated to this neutral ams? Do you agree that form and content are inseparable? Can you think of examples? I would love to hear from you after you watch this. If you can text on the group, if you can text examples of form content relationship that you studied uh, in your literature courses, probably poetry. Uh, if you studied poetry with Dr. Rifat, I'm sure you have a lot of examples. Uh, but please, if you, after you watch this, if you have examples about form content relationship, when we talk about form, for example, in poetry, we talk about line length, uh, syllable numbers, uh, the, the, the overall shape of the poem. Uh, the rhyme, the, the rhyme scheme, the meter, the punctuation. All of these are examples that you can uh, share with us and your classmates on the group. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, however, in modern studies, people recently started to pay more attention to style. Uh, and we have a lot of people arguing that style is an undeniable and inseparable part of meaning. Uh, look at the sentences and their translations. Her father died yesterday. Notice we have an active verb, died. Uh, this is a very neutral uh, rendition. This rendition is as the original, neutral. They are both neutral, which means the first style here, her father died yesterday, was a neutral tone or had a neutral tone. And I basically conveyed and rendered this neutral tone into the Arabic language, which means I did a good job here. Because I not only, not only did I translate the meaning, but I also uh, tried to ish to maintain the style and to convey the style. خلاص لما تسمع مات فلان you don't think of anything خلاص مات الله يرحمه however her father was killed yesterday قتل والدها بالأمس this implies that maybe this was a crime and uh, uh, the speaker is probably uh, an, an objective detached uh, narrator or something يعني he, he or she is are not he or she is not invested in uh, uh, the event of the, the man getting killed. And notice the use of the passive voice and how it was carried over to the target text. It is a crime, for instance, perpetrated by an unknown party. And in Quti Mahaketishana, her father was killed yesterday. I didn't activize it. I didn't make it into an active voice. I won. I maintained the passive voice. Uh, because we don't know. Maybe the, the, the killer is a man. Maybe it's a woman. Maybe it's a, an animal. Maybe a bear attacked him. I don't know. Uh, also, I didn't say because then I would re remove a whole story. I would Turn a blind eye to a, uh, from a whole story. يعني أنا تجاهلت جزء كبير من الحقيقة لما أحكي مات زي مثلاً 
اذا ذاكرين في الجيرناليستيك رايتنج لما اعطيتكم التمرين هاو تو بيكم ان اسرائيلي جيرناليست وانا اعطيته لقصد انه اي وونت يو تو بي اتنشن تو ذا ستايل هاو سمتايمز ذا ميديا مانيبيوليتس ستايل تشينجز ستايل تو سيرف ذير اون بيربسز دي دونت دي دونت سي ان اسرائيلي سنايبر كيل ذا تشايلد دي سي ا تشايلد دايد ات ذا بوردر دايد عادي يمكن الناس كانوا يجروا فطسوه يمكن مات موت تربوا يمكن وقع حجر من السماء وقتلوا عادي فما بيحكوا وبح او كمان ممكن يكونوا احسن شويه بيحكي لك ان فلسطينيان تشايلد واز كيلد وما بيحكوا باي مثلا ان اسرائيلي سولجر وحتى لو حكوا باي ان اسرائيلي سولجر اذا ذاكرين في الناس اللي اخذت معي جرامر 2 لما حكينا uh, we use the passive voice to emphasize the subject of the sentence ممكن انا اكون بدي ايش بدي اعمل emphasis على child فانا اقول a child was killed by an Israeli soldier ممكن واحد تاني بدي يعمل emphasis على القاتل نفسه انه هي اللي قتله مش اي حد تاني يحكي an Israeli soldier shot dead a Palestinian child او killed a Palestinian child او murdered a Palestinian child مثلا يعني فالستايل از ريلي امبورتنت هير فاذر كيكت اور ليكت اور بيت ذا داست يسترداي خر والدها صريعا اي بروبابلي اي دونت لايك ذيس عربي ايكوفالنت اي كودنت ثينك اوف ا بيتر وان تو بي اونست اولسو لكن اي ام شور ذير ار بيتر وانز بيكوز تو بايت ذا داست اند تو كيك ذا باكيت ار اولسو كايند اوف ديراجاتوري You know, derogatory, يعني, uh, disrespectful in a way. It's, it carries a disrespect, disrespectful tone. يعني I don't, the speaker doesn't care about the father. Or maybe he or she uh, يعني, despises the father. He licked the bucket. He, he licked the dust. He bit the dust. Her father kicked the bucket. طلب العربي إيش نحكيها إحنا. حتى in Arabic it's funny. فطس ودع توس مش فاني يعني فاني بس وي سي ات ان ان دارك هيومرس جريم مانر يو نو فطس ودع توسد توسد اي ثينك از خليجي uh, سلم اوراقه سلم والدها اوراقه بالامس خلاص فطس هيومرس اند ذيس ريسبكتفول تو ذا ديد بيرسون هير فاذر باست اواي طلع باست اواي اور باست حتى باست لحالها برضه بمعنى توفى توفي والدها. Uh, her father was martyred in the battlefield yesterday, meaning استشهد. Uh, it carries a, a religious tone. Uh, uh, you're trying to say that the father, يعني it's a subjective religious, probably national tone as well. يعني استشهد. يعني there is uh, there is an enemy. There was a battle. The father was a hero. He got killed or martyred. فاستشهد فيعني ستايل سمتايمز كاريز ا لوت اوف ميننج هيدن ميننج ما يعني ايش بسموه امبلايد ميننج اندر ستيتد ميننج هير فاذر سليبت هيز لاست سليب نام نومته الاخيره او نومته الابديه هير فاذر واز هانجد يسترداي امبلايز الاعدام اكسكيوشن ديث بينالتي شنق او اعدم So it implies that maybe the father committed a crime. Maybe, uh, I don't know. It could, ca- could carry a whole a range of meanings. But this all came from the difference in style. Instead of saying he was killed, I said he was hanged. Shunik. Uh, this is, uh, these are some quotes from your book. Short sentences are not like long sentences. Remember when we talked about Hemingway and Faulkner, for example, the passive voice is different from the active voice. Remember, remember if you are not unsure, go back to grammar two. Look at, re, re, uh, review chapter 11, I guess. Uh, when we use Uh, the passive voice and the active voice. We use the passive voice when we want to emphasize the subject of the sentence. Uh, 
uh, if the sub if you want the subject طبعا يعني not necessarily the agent or the doer but the subject syntactically but if you want to to emphasize the subject the child that was killed because basically being a child uh, uh, and having been killed by an enemy is basically a war crime but if you want to emphasize that you start with the child if you want to emphasize the fact that an israeli soldier killed that child you use the active voice there are many examples uh, a difficult ambiguous grammatical structure stands in contrast with this is uh, prevalent in literature with an easy, clear uh, structure. On the other hand, colloquial words and formal words are not used for the same reason. Or to express the, or to express the same meaning, likewise, uh, rhythmical language has different effects and functions uh, than those uh, of ordinary language. For example, I don't know if I'm going to talk to you about the question of who's who list to hunt. The vain travail has wearied him so so a vain travail. The, the repetition of va, 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 uh, and sa, sa. maybe because somebody is wheezing, is uh, catching his or her breath, va, 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 or sa, sa. could be kind of similar uh, sounds to that, to the wheezing noise, or uh, do or die, or the drum, the drums of war, do or die. The da, da, da sounds like drums of war. Da, da, da. يعني كأنها تقرع قبول الحرب أو something like that. Alliteration and uh, rhythmical language, phonology, phonology is really important when we when we translate, especially poetry. طبعا how you render it, how you translate it is a whole different story. Sometimes it could be impossible, but you could probably uh, draw the reader's attention to the fact that there was something here, but I couldn't translate it. The functional view to style stresses the importance of style in language, being inseparable from uh, meaning. Remember, the form, the style, is part of the content. Therefore, in translation, it should be considered, uh, it should be considered and its problems require solutions as the negligence, as the negligence of the style of the source uh, language results in an incomplete meaning in the target language. Yeah, and if you are translating a novel and you don't know or you, you, you don't notice the particular style that the author is using, you are leaving a good portion of the meaning on the table. Shall we, oh, that's the, the, the more difficult question. Shall we retain the style of the English text or change it into an equivalent Arabic style. يعني هل أنا عندي نص إنجليزي هل أنا أنقل الأسلوب تبعه أسلوب الكتابة تبعه للعربية نفسه ولا أنقل لأسلوب عربي مكافئ. Generally, we keep the style, the English style in Arabic. If you can. Maintain the original uh, source language style, if you can, if it's possible, if it's applicable. If it's applicable, خلي. Uh, uh, however, when not possible or when an equivalent Arabic style is available, we translate the English style into it. In all cases, the style of the Arabic translation depends on and is derived from the style of the English original. This is called stylistic equivalence. يعني لازم الأسلوب اللي بتنقل إله يكون مشابه جدا للأسلوب الأصلي. إذا إذا بتقدر if it's possible and applicable خليه زي ما هو. تمام؟ The passive, the formality level, the ambiguity, punctuation, كل الشغلات هذه. If it's possible, if it doesn't conflict or confuse the meaning. Uh, if not, and if there is an equivalent Arabic style, go for that. But in general, you should keep in mind that the style of the Arabic translation, the final product, should depend on the English original uh, uh, style, or at least to be derived from it in some way. This is called stylistic equivalence. Right. 
طيب I will I want to go طبعا this is I prepared uh, يعني I will take you to how much time do I have okay not a lot طيب I will take you to the book really quickly uh, to look at some stuff maybe we I forgot something طبعا here you can find the sentences uh, طبعا here the book tells طبعا always refer back to the book the book is your main uh, your main source of information The slides are just there to guide me, not you, to tell me what to do. Uh, طيب. So here you say you see that all of these sentences to some people they all mean mata waliduha ams. But to a, to a lot to others, these sentences are different and carry uh, different tones, and they should be translated differently. So always pay attention to the style. طبعا واحد قال لي ايش الستايل يعني ايش وات از ستايل؟ فحكيت لك ستايل از ذا تشويس اوف ووردز وورد اوردر جراماتيك كونستراكشن جراماتيكال كونستراكشنز كل الشغلات هذه اللي هي هانا فرجيتك اياها تو طبعا ستايل بيشمل شغلات ثانيه كثير يعني لكن بشكل عام بشكل عام هي هذه هي الشغلات الستايل Okay. Uh, وطبعا كل واحده موجوده في نص معين الامبيجيوتي والايروني كثير مستخدمين في الدراما وفي بعض ال ال الروايات One second. Oh. طيب طيب I'm really sorry I had a sneezing tantrum or fit sneezing fit طيب okay طبعا we have I have stuff for other lectures I'm not going to cram everything into one lecture because this is not healthy let's go back to the book Astaria, to go over uh, some stuff. Taban, here you have the definition of style, the choices uh, that speakers or writers make. Uh, type. Shall we return the, retain the style? Uh, yani, yes, I would tell you yes. Try as much as possible to retain the style if you can. If it's impossible, and you can you can probably or you found or you find uh, uh, an equivalent Arabic style, go for that. But it should be derived, and it should depend should be derived from, and it should depend on the English style. Right. Uh, next lecture, inshallah, it will be about the style of formality and informality. This will be this was just. Uh, Uh, an introductory lecture to style and what we will do. Uh, it's probably not that long, but the, the next lectures will be uh, loaded with content. So please watch them. And if you have any questions, please do ask. See you, inshallah, uh, in the nearest live session.